Hey YouTube, today I wanted to talk a little bit about sample and hold and some fun things you can do with sample and hold. Um, so I've got this pretty weird little patch here. Uh, it's effectively like a polysynth pad machine and I'm using uh, four Poly7Cs oscillators here, which are wavetable oscillators from Nisthi. And I've got this brains module here, uh, which is from, what's it come from? Geodesics, sorry. I don't know what happened there. Brain melted for a moment. Um, the Geodesics collection, and it's probably my favorite sample and hold module. It's effectively two sample and hold modules, uh, one on the top, one on the bottom, but you've got all these different outputs, which are different uh, colors of noise. Because what sample and hold is, which we'll get to a bit later, is you're just sampling a moment in time from an audio from an incoming audio signal and uh, holding it at that uh, at that level, at that frequency, whatever it is. And so usually sample and holds take an incoming noise signal and because noise is completely random and depending on when it's triggered or when it's sampled, it gives you a different level. Uh, so it's kind of like uh, a random generator of sorts. But what I've got here is I've got all of the outputs going into a whole slew of <laughs> slew generators. Uh, and so they're just sort of smoothing out the edges of a sample and hold. Because if I just, uh, just for argument's sake, if I bring up a scope, and um, I'm triggering this with my keyboard, but if I just bring this out and we look on the scope, I'll just mute it for a second so we can't hear anything. But whenever I hit a key, you can see, I mean, this is like really basic synthesis stuff, I would say, but um, just for the sake of explaining this patch, <laughs> it's worth uh, going through it. And the whole, the whole patch is based around the idea of sample and hold, like using it uh, in fun ways. And so let's unmute it and let's hear what this patch sounds like. <laughs> So I'm just playing on my keyboard. I don't have a camera focused on it because it didn't seem relevant, but I'm playing on my MIDI keyboard. Uh, you can see the inputs coming in over here. So it's a pad, but it's very glitchy, right? So what's happening <clears throat> is that every single output on this sample and hold is being used. It's being triggered every time I hit a key. Um, and I've got a little setup here to turn the gates into trigs, but also to make sure that, because I've got eight note polyphony, that each of the gates is not uh, affecting anything else. So if I show you this, uh, sorry, from here, um, into, I'll just change the color of that. Into here, you can see the different triggers. And every time I trigger it, it's sampling the noise. Um, and in addition, I've got these uh, slew, slew modules are uh, shaving off the edges. So you can see it on the vector mixer here. 
how it sort of bends between signals. And so I've got this vector mixer set up, which is also from NISTI. Really cool module. It's basically a vector synthesis module, so you can feed it four signals uh, or four stereo signals. And um, you can crossfade between all four of them. You can modulate that crossfade. You can also like do keyframes, um, which is, it's very powerful. It's a very cool little module. But you can also see, let's zoom in a bit. You can also see that whenever I hit a key, the wavetable changes. And it's also being slewed. And also the pitch, if we go over here, the pitch is going into a quantizer, which is then going out into a slew and then out into this patch bay, just so we can get it over here with minimal cables because there's already a lot of cables. So it's the same pitch controlling all of the oscillators. And these are polyphonic modules, so it's all polyphonic. And sometimes the vector mixer will mean that sometimes all the voices are coming through and other times it'll just be one of the oscillators at a time. So I really like that because it means that the sound is always evolving and all you need to do to evolve it is to hit a key. And I just think that's cool. And to add a little twist to this, I also have this module from uh, Count Modular, which is like a gate, uh, gate to trig module, as it says, G to T. Um, but you can have a trigger coming out and it can be the start of the gate and the end of the gate. So if I put it into this little mixer here and that is controlling my brains module here, then it will change the sample and hold when I release a key as well. So I've hit the key and then I release it. So you get extra modulations. Which is pretty cool. The other thing as well is that <laughs> I've just sort of realized because I had this set up before where I just had a gate trigger. Uh, what's it called from count modular? I was just experimenting uh, when I was experimenting setting this up. I was just triggering with this manual gate. So I had to have a quantizer because the thing that was controlling the pitch was also the sample and hold. And if you use sample and hold as a pitch input, you need to quantize it if you want anything to be in key. So that's just a bit of backstory behind the module, but I've just realized now I don't actually need this quantizer because I'm playing it with a keyboard. So what I can do is I can just remove this and just go straight into the slew and it will sound probably better. Or it'll sound more appropriate because it'll sound like what I'm actually playing because it was all tuning everything I was just playing to E minor. So now it's actually playing the notes that I'm playing. Not that it really matters. Certainly not for you on the video. Anyway, uh, so that's this setup that I have. But there is something else which I've set up, which uh, is just down here. And instead of controlling this patch with a keyboard, what if I controlled it with a gate sequencer? And then this module, this excellent module from Bafaco called Percol, which is like uh, four VCAs and four attack decay envelopes in one module. Very cool little module. Um, and what if I did that? And, and in this case, I've got, as you can see with these scopes, I've got another uh, sample and hold module here, 
which kind of gets to the nitty gritty of how sample and hold works because I've got a noise module, white noise, pink noise, red noise and violet noise going into the inputs of this sample and hold module from VCV. Each of these inputs is being triggered by a gate. So it's sampling the module or sampling the noise every time it's triggered. And then the output is this and I've color coded these just for sort of reference. Um, so yeah. That's what I've got going here. And this sample and hold is controlling the attack decay on this module. But if we then send these gates, as I'm doing here, back up to here, and they're gonna come out one, two, three, four of this trigger out module. And then instead of controlling it with my keyboard, what if I just got rid of this? And what if I just controlled it with this? Bring it down and I have to unmute it because I've got it going into a different channel on this mixer over here. So let's unmute it. So now we've got like just chaos. <laughs> just like uh, glitchy, glitchy chaos. Let's bring it up. Which I think is cool, and it's also like, uh, if I bring this clock speed down a bit. It's also like, if you want just sort of instant glitchy beats, this could work, you know? If I make these decays smaller, they are being modulated, so they will increase sometimes, but... So I think that's pretty cool. The interesting thing about this, though, is that... Um, the pitch of all of these uh, oscillators is still being controlled by me on the keyboard. So if I hold down a new chord or just a single note, this whole drum beat is going to be in tune with that note. Let's uh, let's just mute this other voice. Which is pretty cool. It's like I've got a, a custom, very strange gated synth or arpe arpeggio or something. And that's the other thing. You could put an arpeggio in here and get even more wild stuff going. Alternatively, if I really wanted to, I could uh, use this quantizer here and I could just for argument's sake, um, I could send it by bringing up a merge module. I could send it these four sample and hold outputs. So let's do that. Let's uh, just copy them across here. And then, oh, and then what I can do is bring this poly module over here and put it into, instead of my keyboard, I can put it into this slew module. And now it's all over, all over the place. <laughs> and with the slew, I can change the, uh, the length. So now we're getting really glitchy. And why don't we, uh... <clears throat> Let's add a wave shaper to this to give it a bit more grit. Just bring that over here. Oh. Bring that here. This is like Apex Twin territory. But very cool. I think. I think it sounds awesome. And then, um, yeah, here we are. <laughs> Just absolute chaos. But one thing that could be interesting 
Because if I had this going with these modules, uh, the pad that I had playing before, the way I've got this set up is that they're not really able to happen at the same time. <laughs> so I'd have to duplicate everything, but that's not what I'm going to do today. I just wanted to sort of uh, show this setup and explain a bit about sample and hold and why, why it's cool. Um, and yeah, like I've, I've explained uh, how it just sort of samples on the spot. But what I haven't shown is that um, if I bring a scope up here, I'll just get rid of this out the way and I just show you what's coming out of some of these modules because this it's sampling and holding but because it's going through these slew limiters it's bending uh, every time it changes it bends um, and smooths out to the next value so all of these are doing that to different degrees and they've all got different inputs as well because these different outputs correlate to different colors of noise. So the top one's white noise, then you've got blue noise, then you've got red noise, and then you've got pink noise. And the other side is, uh, I believe, a uh, phase inverted version of that. And then down the bottom, it's just doubled. So... Really powerful module. I absolutely love brains, but you can get the same results with any sample and hold module, really. They're all pretty much the same. Different features on some modules. And this one is two modules together. Some some of them, like brains, do not require a noise input, but this one does. But I think it's good to use them this way, because it especially if you're starting out, because it sort of makes you forces you to understand what's happening. Uh, and once again, always use scopes when you're starting out. They just explain so much of what's happening. Um, and just as a further example, if I bring up another slew module, one which is maybe a little bit more visually explanatory. Um, and then I just duplicate this scope. And let's take this orange cable. And let's bring it in as a green one. And it's doing nothing at the moment because there's no bending happening here but let's just bring that up and now it'll just happen on the uh the rise rather than the fall as you can see there and then it will just cut off at the fall but if i bring this one up then it will bend between both of them and this shape of the slew is either linear or exponential i usually like to go with exponential um but yeah i assume that that is pretty self-explanatory or pretty uh yeah, pretty self-explanatory. I hope that you get what I'm saying there, but let's unmute this and listen to the wildness for a little bit. Unbelievable. And then if we, we can get even crazier, we go to West Coast Bowl. I also like, with Perkle, you can uh, choke. The different one, the different uh, inputs, which is pretty cool. So yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. Let's uh, let's mute that, and let's bring us back to where we were um, with our pad, and let's unmute that. It's kind of crazy that this is all coming from the same... Well, I have to change... Actually, this is now a combination because... The gate sequencer is still controlling the sample and hold. But, if I get rid of them... And I go back out from here... And just copy that there. Now we're back to where we were. Got a bit of plateau, because who doesn't love a bit of plateau? Let's just bring some of the lows down, mod depth up, some of the highs out. I do have this filter, 
um, controlling the, the master output of all of these oscillators, but I have these DJ filters in between, which are being modulated with the sample and holds whenever I hit a key. It's a bit subtle, though. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed everything I just said. <laughs> um, yeah, let me know what you think. Subscribe, all of that sort of fun stuff. Comment. And I'll see you next week. <laughs>